this is in Kono, and I thought I'd bring it up to you. Recently, the disgrace and deranged congresswoman from the great state of Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Jewish space laser lady, the lady who threatened the Speaker of the House with violence. She recently said that if she had planned January 6th along with Steve Bannon, that it would have been successful. And that the rioters would have been armed. Let's discuss this one quickly. You know, conservatives love to whitewash things. I don't know what it is about them and whitewashing. They do it so effortlessly. Let's start off with the part about arms. Are we really going to sit here, or in this case, stand here, and look each other squarely in the face and say that the rioters didn't have arms? There were people with flagpoles, zip ties, knives, gallows, ropes, metal rods, bats. Last time I looked up, those were deadly weapons when used against another person. Or creature. And this notion that they did not have guns, I guess that's what she's referring to, is also a lie. You know, the District of Columbia has an interesting rule. You cannot bring guns inside the city. But you all know that D.C. and Virginia are very close to each other, especially the northern part of Virginia. It's literally a hop, skitch, skip, and a stone's throw away. You can be in Richmond, Norfolk, and D.C. in like 20 minutes, 15 minutes if there's no traffic. There's DOJ, for those of you who don't know, that's the Department of Justice. There's Department of Justice video that hasn't been pot widely distributed to the public. Showing that Oath Keepers, who were stationed at a Virginia hotel, were bringing in cases after cases of ammunition and weapons into the hotel rooms. And when I mean cases of weapons, I'm talking thousands of AR-15s, thousands of semi-automatic weapons, thousands of ammunition rounds and bullets. That was a staging location outside the city. Now, I'm surprised that Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is unaware of this, seeing as the government used this in the sedition trial of Stuart Elmer Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers. And you all know who the Oath Keepers are, right? And you know what their oath is, right? I most certainly do. They didn't have arms. 
Is that really what Roger D. Levine is suggesting? That these were innocent bystanders who happened to breach barriers? They weren't violent and they didn't break out windows, scale the buildings, illegally enter the rotunda of the United States Capitol? You know, they can do their whitewashing as they're often known to do. They can do that. But you're not going to insult the rest of our intelligence here. Congresswoman Green wants to get from underneath the fact that she came out of the White House on January 5th and posted a video of herself walking out of the White House saying that she had just wrapped up a strategy session in regards to January 6th. And she was looking forward to the outcome of January 6th. So that means she had some integral knowledge about planning the events of January 6th. Look, if I walk out of a room and say, hey, I just wrapped up strategy sessions for planning an insurrection, and then get mad when people say, hey, you planned the insurrection, and say, no, I didn't. When you posted a video strongly implying that you did, what are we supposed to be left to think? Either you are so clueless, boneheaded, and stupid that you don't remember the video you posted, or you don't want to take credit for an insurrection slash coup that wasn't successful. It's got to be one of those two things. Now, now we learn that another congressman from South Carolina on January 17th of 2021, long after January 6th, text the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, demanding that the President use martial law, the military, to quell the citizenry. and to just become a dictator. These would be the same folks who say that President Biden is politicizing the Justice Department. These would be the same folks that say utilizing the National Guard to protect substations and power grid stations is militarizing the military against the citizenry. The same folks who wanted to send the 82nd Airborne Division into Seattle, I guess to say hi to me and folks in the city. Those are the same folks to talk about politicizing the military. The same folks who drafted up an executive order to have the United States military seize voting equipment in metropolitan cities that are predominantly minority communities. The 
those of you sending folks who lodged a complaint, the President Biden and Vice President Harris are politicizing the narrative. Now, I know Republicans are eagerly waiting to gain subpoena power, to do congressional investigations. You know, they do this every time they win the House. This is nothing new. The people are like, oh, the Hunter Biden laptop. Look. If two cats had run across the White House pond, the Republican Party would investigate that too. This is their modus operandi. It goes way back. Let's start in the 90s when the Republicans took the House. Sure, they wanted to get rid of welfare. Because helping poor American citizens is not in their genetic makeup as a political party. But you remember what they were saying back in the 90s, too. We're going to investigate whitewash. We're going to investigate President Clinton. We're going to investigate Hillary Clinton. It was investigation, investigation, investigation. Remember? Okay. Then they take power in 2010. We're going to investigate Eric Holder, the Attorney General, fast and furious. We're going to investigate Hillary Clinton, Benghazi. You all remember this? I most certainly do. Now they take power again. We're going to investigate the January 6th committee. We're going to investigate Hunter Biden. We're going to investigate Ukraine. Do you all know why they do this, the Republican Party? Because they absolutely have no legislative priorities that would benefit the citizenry. So in order to bullshit and placate the fringe elements of their base, they have to pretend that they're doing these investigations. Investigations that really never lead to anything besides raising a bunch of money and a bunch of clowns coming on your television screen telling you they're going after their political adversaries. All the while, hunger continues to increase in America. More people go unhoused in America. Poverty continues to soar in America. Crime continues to increase due to poverty in America. But fear not, the Republican Party is going to investigate. People ought to be ashamed that they keep falling for this complete and other bullshit that they do. They've been doing this for like two decades now. Two decades, 20 years, they've been pulling the same stuff. Hey, and if it keeps working, why not? You know, they say if it's not broken, don't fix it. It works for them. They gain control of the House. They do these sham investigations that produce Dootley Squad. 
They raise a lot of money. They come out in your TV screen and gain a following and a name for themselves. And then they go back home. Enjoy dinner with their family. All the while you, the citizen, continues to get poorer and poorer and poorer in your own country. You know, I keep hearing this and it's true. Americans cannot afford America anymore. Are they going to do an investigation about this? I said it in another video and I'll say it again. We need to demand that the Progressive Caucus and the Freedom Caucus do reparations in this country. That they do what's necessary and they take care of business. They can do these sideshow Bob stunts all they want. But they better be doing some real work. Or else when they're up for re-election, you throw the bums out. And they'll be up for re-election before you know it, in the blink of an eye. You know, now they're talking about they have subpoena power. You mean the same subpoenas that Mark Meadows didn't respond to adequately? The same subpoena that Steve Bannon flaunted, refused to participate in? The same subpoena that Jason Eastman Fred the Fifth Rudy Giuliani has been stonewalled those subpoenas now we're supposed to respect the process because the Republicans have congressional power But when the opposition had subpoena power, they all but scoffed and said that it wasn't important. So there are a bunch of damn hypocrites too. Shocking, I know. You know, they're going to play their games. And I'm going to sit there and watch them play their games. And like oftentimes, they're going to overplay their hand. They generally always do. When the Republicans do these sham investigations, generally it ends up backfiring on them, big time. I think this is going to be one of those cases as well. I don't have much of an appetite to care about Hunter Biden's laptop. I know Republicans are like, oh my goodness. But they did the same thing with Hillary's emails, right? And nobody really cared about that shit either. They have these weird obsessions with things that people don't care about. The things we do care about. They simply act as though they don't exist. Yeah, this is the same monkey business they always do. Elect clown 
don't expect the service. And sadly, there's a lot of clowns that are elected. And you're going to see the service in the house. Oh, it's going to be a shit show. I would say it's going to be entertaining, but when we have so many problems that really need to be fixed in this country, it's not entertaining to avoid problems that need to be solved to create theatrics and spectacles that do nothing but raise money for conservative fringe elements in the society. That's all these investigations are really about, is to raise money for congressional members. Jim Jordan will jump on television and say, I'm investigating this, I'm investigating that. And while he's on television, his campaign will be sending out campaign fundraising emails saying, send me money so I can investigate Hunter Biden. Look, I know how the D.C. game works. It is what it is. But we have real problems we need to fix. And none of the problems that we really need to fix in this country, I guarantee you, have anything to do with Hunter Biden's laptop, Ukrainian financial assistance, none of that. We need to do reparations and we need to do DACA. And you all need to demand that the Freedom Caucus and the Progressive Caucus work to accomplish those things. Because if we don't do what we need to do, our problems are going to persist and grow worse. That's a fact. 